Hi guys, Engineer Wannabe here. Uh, it's been a while. It's been a while since I've done a full-on video. I've been doing some live streams with uh, with some friends and that's been fun, but uh, it really has been a while since I've done a review. Uh, so today we're gonna fix that. We're gonna be doing a review on the Seiko SLA 055, Seiko Prospects 1968 Recreation, Save the Ocean, Limited Edition, something or other also known as the SLA 055. <laughs> so uh, this is a higher end Seiko dive watch and um, probably one of my favorites. It probably is my favorite Seiko dive watch. Uh, that's a spoiler for the review. There are some positive and some negatives, so we'll, we'll talk about all that. Um, on my wrist today, I am wearing the Grand Seiko SBGM221. I have it on this uh, deluxe Russian hatch screen. I uh, really enjoying this combination. It is kind of similar to the stock combination, but more burgundy-ish. Before we start, I just want to say that you are infinitely valuable. I hope you do know that. There is no replacing you, no matter who you are, no matter uh, what you think of me. It, it doesn't doesn't matter. I just want you to know that you are infinitely valuable. You're irreplaceable, and uh, and you are precious. You are worth it. Um, but yeah, let's uh, let's go ahead and do the review. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about this uh, beautiful watch here. This, as I mentioned earlier, and as you know, is the SLA 055. It is a 42 and a half millimeter diameter watch. It's around 12 and a half millimeters thick. It's lug to lug is around 48 millimeters. And it's lug width here is 20 millimeters. So those dimensions are what initially drew me to this watch. They released two watches so far at the time of this recording. Um, there's the SLA 055 and the SLA 057, which has this case shape. Um, it is a slightly different case shape, but it is based on the 6159-7001-1968 uh, diver. And it has that same general case design but it is different. Um, noteworthy differences are the fact that it is a couple of millimeters smaller, it's a lot thinner, and uh, it's got 200 meters of water resistance instead of uh, 300, I believe. And of course, it's a regular beat, 28,000 vibrations per hour, um, 288 vibrations per hour, instead of a high beat movement. Uh, but this watch is basically what I really wanted. I do wish I could pull off a Marine Master 300, the SLA 021, 023. I cannot. Um, I only have a six and a quarter inch wrist. I can't really pull off a Marine Master 300. Um, and I was hoping that they would uh, bring something like this out. I should also mention that there are the other uh, Marine Master 200 variants or the Marine Master 200 reduced SBB 185, 187. Um, a couple of other uh, ones, 207 is another noteworthy uh, Marine Master 200. Um, I have had problems with the 6R35 movement and I have been weary of uh, going back to that, which is why when they released one with a 8L movement, um, I was happy to, <laughs> to take the leap. But uh, yeah, so this has the 8L movement. Uh, it is rated for plus 15, minus 10. This, of course, is running way better than that. Um, it's running at minus one seconds per day. Uh, I am not an accuracy snob um, anymore, I should say, if accuracy isn't the intention. So if, if it's spring dry, of course, I expect the accuracy. But over here, I don't. Um, but let's uh, let's talk about this watch uh, further. Let's take a look at that beautiful dial. So this is the Save the Ocean Limited Edition. So we have this icy blue fume style gradient dial. There's a very subtle texture that's supposed to typify, supposed to look like ice, I guess, a glacier. <laughs> um, whatever Seiko's marketing department came up with. Uh, it, it's nice, a very nice subtle textured dial and it's very enjoyable to look at. We've got applied indices. I'm pretty sure they're applied. Uh, they are very, um, they're quite tall, not very tall, but quite tall. And uh, of course you got the Marine Master hands, um, nice and thick. And uh, you have this really aggressively edged bezel. It's a coin edge almost, uh, very easy to grip. Uh, and this is a 120 click bezel and I'll let you hear uh, the, the action here. So typical Seiko bezel, 
um, very precise but not not clicky um, more of a fluid feeling um, which is uh, which is very enjoyable nonetheless I know some people really like hard harsh clicks uh, I don't I actually do really like this um, w one thing I mentioned in the unboxing was that this is ever so slightly off um, the chaptering at the six o'clock position if you really really look for it ever so slightly off uh, off the center but um, you know what most watches are ever so slightly off um, well, I shouldn't say most but uh, quite a few you'd be you'd be surprised if you really looked for for defects since this is a Seiko that is one of the things that we look for and so we found it uh, it doesn't bug me at all now this bezel uh, it, I'm not sure if you can tell, but it's not really a white text. It's actually um, a light blue, uh, which is interesting. I probably would have preferred white text, um, but I think they're going with the icy theme here. So it's a light blue text on this uh, on this bezel. And the other thing to note about the, the bezel is that it looks like ceramic, but I don't believe it is. I'm not sure if I'll be able to catch a little scratch there. I don't know if you'll see it there, but there's a scratch. It looks like a smudge, but let me assure you, that is a scratch. So I am tempted to say this is some sort of ADLC coating. Uh, I'm not sure. Um, I know Grand Seiko uses ADLC on their bezels. Uh, I am. I don't think I would have uh, bumped into anything that would have scratched ceramic. And I'm sure if I did, it would scratch the crystal as well. So there is an there's a little mark there I'm not sure what that came from but it is there uh, let's talk about this this metal it's not uh, the not your run-of-the-mill metal here this is what Seiko calls ever brilliant stainless steel uh, it is uh, very corrosion resistant uh, I'm not, I don't believe it is any harder than regular steel but it's also very lustrous and I'm sure you can tell how uh, incredible this is uh, part of that incredibleness is the fact that this is uh, Zeratsu polished the other part is the fact that this is so amazing and lustrous is because of that ever brilliant steel so it is very bright so right now I have it on a NATO but I'll just throw it on like this uh, as you can tell it is still really big on me uh, but I am more than happy with how it looks on my wrist, so I am okay with it. So this is the strap that it comes on. It's like this candy bar, chocolate bar uh, kind of strap. Very, very beautiful buckle. I really enjoy this buckle. It's nice, but it is... I'm not a huge fan of rubber straps. It is comfortable, though, I should say, so I do wear it, uh, but not too often. Uh, what I do prefer to wear this is on is sailcloth. Um, so this looks incredible on sailcloth straps. Occasionally I'll go on with a NATO, very, very occasionally. I have been doing that recently. Um, I'm not sure why. Maybe I'm in a bit of a NATO phase, I guess. But most, 99% uh, of the time, it's on one of these sailcloth straps. These are from Artem straps, by the way. Really, really excellent straps. There are a lot of options out there. Uh, for sailcloth. I think this looks excellent on sailcloth. It does not come on a bracelet. One thing I should mention about the strap is this keeper. Um, I'm sure a lot of you may have experienced this metal keeper from Seiko. It is not fun. <laughs> uh, one thing is that it does slip. So the strap tends to, the tail tends to come off it. Now this is probably a problem because I have smaller wrists. So I'm on the last hole here or one of the last holes up around here. I have a huge tail, so it'll probably slip out of that if uh, that is your use case scenario as well. Um, but one thing I did was I just took the sailcloth keeper from one of these straps here and uh, put it on here and it is uh, perfect. And you know what, it, it doesn't look too bad either. So it doesn't look great, but uh, <laughs> Um, definitely definitely doesn't look bad and I don't really see it because it's facing the other side of me loom we didn't talk about the loom loom on this is uh, uh, I mean we do, do we even have to talk about it because it is Seiko uh, Seiko Lumer Bright is excellent um, and this is no exception this the loom on this guy is excellent as well well guys I know I said I 
bring up a bunch of negatives, um, I'm actually stumped. I can't think of any negatives. I usually find something to uh, to moan about, <laughs> but uh, not this time, I guess. I, I really do love this watch. It is excellent. Um, I don't get to wear it as much as I'd like to. I mean, I guess I could moan a bit about that 430 date, but then again, I don't really mind it either. It's uh, it's well integrated. It kind of disappears unless if you're really looking for it. Um, and it does not cut into any of the indices. So looks great to me. Um, and you know, I guess maybe that uh, ever so slightly off chapter ring is something to moan about. Uh, one could even, I mean, if you really wanted to, you could blame it on parallax. <laughs> I don't really have any negatives other than those things, guys. This is such an excellent watch. I hope uh, you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, let me know. I'd be happy to help you out. Um, and remember guys, you are infinitely valuable. I do really mean that. Um, there is no replacing you. Uh, I hope you are well wherever you may be. And uh, I will chat with you in the next video. Take care everyone. Stay safe out there. Bye.